Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic of geography and related aspects on our channel. Now in today's session on regional planning and development, we are going to talk about the process of measurement of development. The basic question that everyone wants to know is how to measure the word called development. Who's developed, who's not, how do we decide? What are the indicators for various socio-economic and environmental developments across the world? So in today's session, let's discuss all these points. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about the process of measuring development and also these indicators related to economic, social and environmental spheres of development. So the first important point that we all know is that many scholars have developed a number of definitions for the term development across the world. So generally in single word, in single line, what do we know by development? That it is simply describing a good change moving forward. Right. So if you observe, there are various themes in development concept across the world. So the first theme is development as a vision. When we say we are visionaries and looking towards development, this is one of the first themes across development. And here the term is used to describe how desirable a society or a region is and possibly with regard to what it can become in future. Right? So that's a vision. Then if you observe the second theme in development is a historical process. Now remember we have been talking about the process of development since past till present. So historical processes operating so refers to social change, economic change over time periods due to many processes that happened, many things that changed the world. So here if you observe communism, capitalism and several isms that we talk about in this kind of development theme and then there is the third kind of development theme in which we study many things like development as an action. Now this is practical ways of development, pragmatic way of development which is action oriented. So if you observe it refers to deliberate action in order to do what? To bring a change in the things for betterment. For example, poverty alleviation programs, improving hunger, education and all those things that we talk about. And remember, to talk about these things, we already have an agenda and that is what we know as Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Goals. So if you observe these Sustainable Development Goals, these are based on action plans of development. That what do we need to do? So we need to cover these 17 goals and visualize our future on the basis of this. So if you look into the various indicators of this economic, social and environmental development, we'll find that why do we need this indicator and what is the role of these indicator? So the first important thing that we need to understand is that these indicators are important in order to not be misguided, not be misleaded. Why? Because if you observe, measuring development can be very misleading at times. Who's developed, who's not, the definitions. So, because wealth of a country might not be shared out equally. So, hence, if you see only having wealth, remember the distribution of wealth also matters. So, that could be somewhere misleading as well. Then if you observe carefully, as one country might be seen as very developed when using only one indicator. While on the other indicators, it may lag. So between the indicators only, there is a shift, isn't it? So then what we need to do is a single indicator cannot measure a country. Now remember, a single indicator is not sufficient to measure countries' progress and development, regions' development in a correct manner. So we need the composite indices. So precisely these are the reasons because of which we need to also identify these indicators of development and a certain similar single indicators are grouped together to form composite indicators. Now many composite indicators are used in today's world to describe the developmental levels of across the world. So development indicators are numerical measure of the quality of life in a country. Now remember mostly they are about quality of life but they are numerical measure. We rank them, we order them, we take in percentages, right? So that's where we talk about quantity and quality both. Now, indicators that are used to illustrate this progress is 
understood in these headings economic social environmental right so if you observe carefully one of the examples of these composite indicators is HDI human development index I'm sure you have learned about it it's already covered in the videos and models and theories as well and also if you look into perspectives in human geography so human development index is what primarily the indicators if you observe life expectancy at birth adult literacy gross enrollment ratio GDP per capita and then we combine them and gradually develop HDI. So this is a composite index we say. Not a single indicator talks about the entire country. So now let's look into one by one economic, social and environmental indicators. So economic development indicators if you observe very carefully it's about the exchange of goods and services, it's about money, it's about income. Look into this particular news item. Delhi is China and Bihar is Mali. If we compare per capita income of Indian states to foreign countries. So this is one very interesting comparison if you observe, right? So you can observe it here. This kind of comparison is given where if you observe Himachal Pradesh is compared to Myanmar, Delhi is compared to China, right? UP is compared to Senegal on the basis of per capita income. So you can observe this kind of thing. Then, so basic idea is that income becomes the first foremost indicator of a country's individual's economic development. And individuals make society, so societal development on that. So we say per capita income, that how much income per head is being generated. Right? The same things we talk when optimum theory of population we discussed. So it is calculated dividing the area's total income by its total population. That's we say per capita. So if you observe carefully, this kind of data you'll find in newspapers and also at many books. So disparity in per capita income. Look, per capita income is highest in Goa. And then as you go, Delhi, Sikkim, Chandigarh, Puducherry, and last you see is Bihar in this particular news item and this is a data of 2013-14 it may have changed slightly but this is just to indicate that how we are in a disparity of economic development this is why indicators are important to tell us that where per capita income is highest and where would you like to go obviously a place where more opportunities are more per capita income is there then if you observe the second important economic indicator is productivity and consumption indicators what are this this is basically productivity in terms of output output per worker which is higher in those countries which are far developed where secondary tertiary quaternary sectors are more developed than just primary sectors of economies right so if you observe one of the kind is GDP. Now this GDP, you must have heard several times in news. Now this GDP is what? It's talking about production and consumption. And this is major indicator of country's economic development. Remember, not overall development, right? So GDP is widely used as measures of economic output and production. And it is defined as total value of goods and services produced within a country's borders in a specific time period. Right? Many times we talk about quarterly GDP, annual GDP, monthly GDP. So private consumption plus investment plus public expenditure. Then you have change in inventories plus exports minus import. This when totaled is called our GDP. This is one of the indicators and economic indicators specifically. Then we have GNP per capita. Now this is total market value of all final goods and services produced by a country in one year. Right? So the more a country produces this per person, the more developed it is assumed to be. That's where again next economic indicator in terms of production and consumption comes in picture. And then we have PPP. This is purchasing power parity. So purchasing power parity is a metric to compare economic productivity and standards of living in a country. Right? So a dollar may buy more goods in Kenya than it will buy in Switzerland. Now what does it say? The dollar is same dollar. But having one dollar in Kenya would buy you more goods while same one dollar would not buy you same amount of goods. So this is where purchasing power becomes very important and it talks a lot about country's economy, economic progress. It means Kenya is far lesser developed than what Switzerland is. Isn't it? So we say that these indicators are important. Then we have the third important indicator called occupational structure and it is related to our labor force. So a country's labor force, if it is more engaged in primary activity, what does it indicate? 
it says that it will not be high income countries higher income countries are mostly involved in tertiary secondary and quinary sectors right so that is one indicator then we have infrastructure as an important indicator economic indicator so foundations of any society remember urban centers transport networks communications energy distribution systems farms factories mines these are essential part of infrastructural development of a country and if a country is doing well in these sectors it means it is on a path of good economic development betterment in economic development so this is important now let's go to some composite economic indicators that is not single indicator but trying to combine some indicators and find some indices so physical quality of life index pqli was developed by morris in 1979 and what does it combine it combines literacy rate index infant mortality rate and index life expectancy divided by three by using this formula we try to map the physical quality of life in a country then we have the next indicator that is human development index so this index as you remember Meghna Desai and Nobel laureate Amartya Sen alongside Mahbubul Haq these people calculated and we have just talked about HDI in the lecture beginning itself so this is also important indicator a composite index economic index and then we have human poverty index now this HPI is also devised by United Nations and it's very important in order to understand that what is the poverty levels of a country right in terms of survival knowledge and decent standard of living then what we have is another composite index which is quality of life index so this is physical quality and this is overall quality of life index and remember france and powers established it in 1984 and this is in terms of satisfaction of the quality of life so these are certain important economic indices combining economic indicators which we know then let's venture into social development indicators and when we say social it means people and their interaction society right so we talk about education as one of the major indicators then we talk about literacy rate under education and gross enrollment ratio so these two things are the major things inside education when we say social development indicators a country with good literacy rate gross enrollment ratio obviously adds to better educational qualifications and also education is not just about formal education but informal education as well now when we look into health sector becomes one of the major social indicators so remember who it talks about physical mental social parameters of health and remember health covers a wide range of activities what are these wide ranges look into this population control family planning drug control prevention of food adulterations immunization removal of major communicable and non-communicable diseases these indicate that how good a country is in terms of health indicators then what we observe is certain more health indicators here like life expectancy at birth maternal mortality ratio mmr then you have infant mortality ratios so if you observe carefully these health indicators talk a lot about the health of children women aged people so this is important health indicator part of social indicator in terms of development now let's venture into environmental development indicators so look into this total forest cover of our country is 21.71 percent of geographical area and tree cover is 2.91 percent combining the total we get 24.62 percent in 2022 and what is our objective our objective is to attain 33 percent right according to national forest policy so forest cover is very important then what we talk about is richness and biodiversity energy production and consumption and most important in today's world pollution levels as major indicator of environmental condition in a country so pollution levels of air soil water and now we are also talking about marine pollution right so these are certain aspects where environmental development indicators are there now why it is important more concern in today's world because of this composite index that we have created of environment right so what are these environmental performance index and if you are aware India was ranked last in 2022 rankings of EPI and remember EPI was first published in 2002 and environmental sustainability index is another index which is important published since 1999 to 2005 it also talks about environmental law and policy and then look at EPI in today's condition India's score was 18.9 and it is ranked the last it scored 12.5 on health which means poor air quality poor drinking water poor sanitation 
and remember these are important indicators of social as well so you see socio economic and environmental indicators are interlinked together so if you observe rank of other countries in epi neighboring countries of india scored slightly better pakistan has 176th rank bangladesh 177th rank which is two three ranks better than india then if you observe how was the report prepared many people questioned that the report would have been fabricated but this report has been accepted by many countries of the world say 180 countries ranking so if you observe it is prepared and scored and ranked in 2022 based on environmental performance and uses available data from recent year now if you observe that who is involved in analysis of this performance so researchers at columbia university and earth institute of yale they are involved in computing this particular data so the question is that even if we are not last say there is a discrepancy in data even if we rank 150 it doesn't sound good it means india has a lot to improve in environmental indicator as well so denmark has been ranked one with epi score of 77.90 then we have uk then we have finland malta and sweden so if you observe western europe scandinavian countries are always ranking good in hdi as well epi as well that is saying a lot about their development levels in the world then global green economy index is another index you say ggei and this is talking about the performance ass assessment of efficiency sectors like transport buildings energy investment and national leadership around climate change then if you observe the ecological footprint now we have been talking about ecological footprint since kyoto protocol right so it's talking about the method of estimating the biologically productive area necessary to support current consumption pattern right and remember whatever we do whatever we consume in everyday life has a footprint on environment so if it is reduced in terms of need then we'll have lesser footprint so land for energy supply food forest products and built environment degraded areas sea space for fishing these are the indicators that we use while computing ecological footprint and you can observe the same in this particular diagram here so ecological footprint energy housing lumber sustenance fisheries these are major indicators in today's world that generally we use to compute this particular ecological footprint and which is very important for understanding the levels of development across the world in terms of environment so now when we have discussed the various aspects of measuring development various indicators of development in the sessions to come we'll be also talking more on other aspects of regional planning and development so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and don't forget to join our channel as a member in order to get replies to your queries so all the best wishes take care